but this is going to be an intriguing battle for sure. So let's hand you over to Tom for the official fight announcement. Well, ladies and gentlemen, your first fight of this evening is in the welterweight division. Scheduled three rounds of five minutes. Fighting out of the blue corner, he stands in at 170 centimeters tall, 77 kilograms, and a professional record of eight fights with four victories and four defeats. From the Netherlands, Suli Bully of the Salam! His opponent in the red corner, he stands in at 182 centimeters tall, also 77 kilograms. Two fights on his record from the Netherlands as well. Bad matter, Wesley Fokker! When the referee in this fight is Mr. Daniel Sharifi. So we have Wesley Fokker in the all orange shorts there in the red corner and Sully the Bully in the gray and orange Robin. Sully, 77 kilograms? I have no idea how he got down to that weight. He did cut a lot of weight. Uh, you, there's, you know, a very large reach difference, and that is going to be the key for Bad Mother here. Yeah, so on the official reach record, Wesley Fokker had 180 centimeters, Sully Mohammed has 100. And that's the thing, you certainly cannot only be worried about being taken down by this man. And, and as soon as you do, as soon as you're, the concern with the takedown occupies your attention, he'll punch you in the face. That's exactly what Sully did. You know, if you're low and your hands are low and you're worried about him taking you down, next thing you know, you get rocked and now he's on top in half guard. How long did it take you to recover? Because those were some hard shots that Fokker ate straight away. Yeah. You know, presumably he'll be recovered now. And for some, some people, look at the shoulder pressure here. The, sh the shoulder pressure of Suli was a key there, and he fought it. Now Suli, watch his right arm. His right hand will take the, the trapezius muscle. Mm. Now it can look to pass. Fokker's doing a really nice job here, but this is a very temporary position. That shin across, that has to lead somewhere. It's, it, otherwise, this happens, right? You can't just make space for space's sake or the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt can hold the position and throw punches. And now he's gonna to look to go to the back, presumably he does. There you go, and from here, one assumes Sully has a whole range of options open to him. Yeah, you, if you ask Wesley, you know, what do we want to happen here? They will have prepared for this. It's called worst case scenario drills, and you prepare for having a, a black belt on your back, but this wouldn't have been the goal. And if you were to ask Sully and his team, oh, it looks, looks pretty yeah. tight. Yeah. But then the this, question is yeah. here is, can he get his legs it's, over? He doesn't need it necessarily with the knee in. Now, a bit of a bulldog kind of shape where all you got to do is go hand to hand here, and he absolutely can choke him out from here. He's definitely got the strength for it. Yeah, but and we'll see. Yeah, he may go out. He may go out. Does that, does that arm position look good to you? Under, is it yeah. under the chin enough there, Robert? It is, yeah, but oh, that's but the hard. answer. That is the answer. Turn towards the hole, and he was able to do that. Uh, good work by Wesley. For sure, what, what sort of confidence would that give you, knowing that you have a black belt, a black belt for 12 years in that position and again getting out of it, Robert? Yeah, I mean, it's a victory, right? We, we succeeded, he was on our back, trying to choke us, and now we are in a better position, we're in guard, where we can elbow him, the fence is close, but watch for Wesley's feet, right? Wesley's left foot is trying to elevate. If his right foot goes into the hip bone, he'll be trying to make space himself and heist his own hips out. But from this position, uh, Suli can sort of squash that foot. No, now instead he slices it in. Slice, you see the direction he turned his own hip and followed his own knee and then sliced his way back in. With Wesley's feet joined, he's not going to stand up. Now he opens his feet. Yeah, and it looks like the way that uh, Suli's gone for body position here, he just stopped because one assumes Fokker wants to try and use that fence a little bit to try and end up, uh, to try and rise to his feet. Suli was considering dropping back for some type of heel hook or some attack on the lower extremities. And then he felt something in that movement where he was like, There's, this is more risky than I want to take right now. Now he's passing to half guard. So he'll settle himself down on top here and punch. Very smart. That's exactly what he wants. No rush. 
No, exactly. We are only, uh, you know, we've only got, we're not even through round one yet. And so far, this will just be slowly just wearing down his energy, like we'll talk about in early yeah. fights. Letting his dominance known, just really eking out, just dragging the, uh, the exhaustion levels of Fokker higher and higher. Wesley's actually quite chill. And, and you saw it, you know, as Corner was talking, you saw him relating to them, you know, engaging. He's taking deep breaths very intelligently, filling his air, uh, his lungs with oxygen and just kind of chilling. He'd prefer to get out of here, but he's not going to waste energy getting out of here. He'll stay where, if he has to. If that means he, he lost round one, well, so be it. We've got two more rounds. And, and that is the wise thing here. Don't burn yourself out. Nice. Are you surprised that um, uh, Sully hasn't advanced further, got into side control, or do you think he's just happy here, just wearing Fokker down? Yeah, I, I think he's also, he does not want, well, now he's got enough time mm -hmm. to attack this, right? So he going he'll for a yeah, and, and he'll try to get up and pull the elbow to his sternum. If he can step over the head, too, he would prefer that. Now he trapped the right arm. See the right arm's trapped underneath yeah. there? Now oh. he's in behind the head. Uh, no, it's not there anymore. So smart, throw a few punches forearm into the ear, and now pull the elbow to the sternum, and Wesley gets up. Now, this, you can, you can attack and try to take this man down if you like, but it's not gonna win you the round, so why burn the energy? Wesley, quite wisely, just sort of managed that, and then casually walks back to his corner. Agreed, that was a, just a mature fight from Sully there. He never looked like he was really pushing the acceleration too hard, but looked in cruise control the entire round. Andy, scores, thoughts, what do you reckon? 10-9 uh, to the more experienced fighter. Uh, you know, we saw him go down. You see the choke there, it was quite deep. But you know what? The fact that Wesley managed to get out of that, and so early on as well, before, you know, the fighters are, when they're sweatier, it's just so much easier to get out. They were quite dry at that point. Uh, at that point. So for Wesley to get out, I think, and to survive round one, I think that's a win on its own. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, round one went to Sully, but this is a, a small victory for, for Wesley. He starts back on the feet, he's unhurt. He's not exceptionally fatigued. And in fact, Sully was taking deep breaths. He's more, and you see it in the body type, He's more of an anaerobic athlete. Mm -hmm. Sprint, recover, sprint, recover, sprint, recover. You see it. I mean, look at this guy puffing up okay, as the fight goes on. Right? Whereas Wesley is approaching this more like, a, you know, like a, a middle distance runner, which is exactly what he wants. And Robin, that's actually what you called the beginning of the fight, the plan. You could see Wesley's uh, center of gravity is very yeah, low. He dropped himself low, and that is very smart. You don't want to be punching down. There's no need to be punching down. You can also protect your hips a little more. There was a fake takedown, just a small, subtle fake by Suli, and that was just enough to engage here in the grappling. But Wesley should be able to separate this. That The right, well, two overhooks now by Suli. Now, Wesley, see his left hand is in the bicep. Uh-oh, that was a slick move. Now oh, he will attack like the, yeah. the leg. Yeah, yeah, he will. And that's a great way to access, one, we're, we're attacking the leg, but two, we're, we're owning the position, and now he comes up on top. You don't need to finish that, that leg attack. All you need to do is benefit from it, and he did. He's on top. Yeah, and this all goes back, right, Robin, to fucking not uh, disengaging when he was against the cage, because yep. now he allowed himself to get into Sully's world. And the question is, and this goes to you, is how does Fokker get out of this situation? How do you escape a black belt determined to keep you exactly where you are now? So it has to start, and, it's, and it shows in, in Fokker's nonverbal expressions, it, it has to start with not be, wor being worried about what just happened, right? We are here and we know what to do here. If you're concerned with where we were 30 seconds ago, you're not present, right? So push off just like that, and now get a, an underhook just like that, and two options. Push the head all the way down, or lift the chin all the way up. And he's going with lifting up. Yep. And now, yeah, he's, Walker's doing pretty well, to be, to be honest. Now, see how he's pushing the head down? And instead, Sully will push his head up. Now he wants to get under the chin and lift him all the way up. That's perfect. And like you said, he looks like he is doing a fine job. So at this stage, he's done well to get this to this position. Now, how does Fokker disengage and get this to a stand-up fight? So the first thing he'll want to do is turn Suli so that he's the one with Suli having his back to the cage. Very difficult. But of the multiple, so again, I don't think there's any question that Suli has won round one and the first half of round two. 
However, as much as if we asked Fokker yesterday or the day before, what would you like to do? Oh, I'd like to move my feet. I'd like to land my jab. I'd like to land my low kicks. He would have acknowledged, him and his team would have acknowledged, we may have to, to wait till later. We may have to get this big, strong, anaerobic athlete tired. And uh, that is starting to happen to some degree for him. You know, he's making small improvements in position and he is staying chill. But he could lose two rounds. And if he loses two rounds, then he has to finish the fight. Yeah, and then then it comes a question, even though it doesn't look like Sully is uh, gassing out any points so far, but if you cut a lot of weight to get down, as you can, <laughs> just looking at him, we have to assume Sully has done. Maybe it's that third round that Fokker can let that middle distance runner's body yep. like loose a little bit. Yes, uh, there, there are some things working against him, and, and that is, this is, as we mentioned, this is what Sully has done his whole life, right? If you asked him to run up a flight of stairs carrying bricks like we talked about, or you asked him to climb a wall, or you asked him to, uh, you know, do, do um, uh, Olympic lifts. He would fatigue in different ways than he does doing, quote, jiu-jitsu, right? Mm. This thing, he manages himself well in it. So he will fatigue because he is working hard, but he's also winning rounds, and he's gonna fatigue less than he would in almost any other kind of physical endeavor than he does when ju doing jujitsu because he's so comfortable in it. Yeah, and being, uh, just, just a reminder for all the viewers, uh, Sully uh, was a black belt at 23 years old. He's now 35, so the amount of hours he must have spent on the, app, uh, on the mat in his lifetime so far is yeah. earth shattering. Yeah. He may spend as much time wearing a gi or, or grappling uh, as he does doing anything else in his life. In fact, he may do more of it. An interesting decision there to stand the combatants up, Robin? Or is that something you agree with? Uh, yeah, you know, it was going slow, and it's up to Sully to do the work in that spot. So, so an interesting point, the position of this takedown compared to the others, Robin. What, now Sully has this no, uh, fucking nowhere near the sides of the cage. Do you expect him to try and do anything different or so the same thing? It's a harder stand up in many ways for Fokker, but Fokker's doing a, making a smart choice here. He's going to lose this round, but he's going to try to hurt his man with elbows. If, you know, it sucks to lose a round, but it sucks less if you lost a round and hurt your man. So you're still getting a small benefit from this from this course of action. But, you know, to lose two rounds, now you are left with the fact that you have to finish your hand, if, if that's what we agree, that, that he has lost two rounds. Yeah, and I think, uh, Andy, we'll put that over to you. Do you believe that uh, Fokker has lost two rounds? On the score on the scorecards, yes. Um, but I'll be honest, I think Wesley's still in it. Yeah. What we saw at the end of that second round was uh, Sully starting to slow down towards the end. We saw him score a takedown, and you know, he was just kind of stalling, recovering there a little bit. Whereas, look, Wesley, I think he's gonna come out the aggressive fighter in this round number three. I think this is the, uh, the round for him, whether he makes it or breaks it. And I don't know if you noticed the, uh, Sully got up off the floor there very, very slowly. Fokker yeah. leapt up to his corner. Yeah. And even look at the body positions in the cage. Fokker now is standing up, no worries whatsoever, while Sully, even though being the dominant fighter, is resting against the cage and breathing heavy. Yeah, he has worked extremely hard, and he's been in positions he wants. Uh, and that's a testament to, to what Wesley Fokker's doing. Wesley is forcing him to work. The reason that Sully can't just go and, quote, uh, and great choice early, kick the leg, uh, and the reason that Sully can't just grab him and start trying to submit him is because Fokker is really dangerous and he'll lose the position. So Sully's having to work to keep these positions. So it's an interesting, I, uh, I understand why that uh, Fokker has his hips so low when he's uh, fighting to try and stop the takedown. Obviously didn't help that much there, but what would be the, how is that potentially affecting his striking? Do you think he's you know, crippling himself in his offense there? Well, if you're down, if you lower your, yourself down to, to strike straight, it can be a still of benefit. So it is the right approach for him, um, but it's such a, tri this game is so, has so many variables. Every single fight is different. Every dynamic is different. Every moment of every fight is different. But what the story of this fight begin, becomes about time. Do, you know, how much time do we have? How, how much are we willing to work 
to get more time to be able to try to finish this match. Because if you're Wesley Fokker, you have to finish this match. And if you're Suli, you just have to keep doing what you're doing. He's been doing a masterful job of it. Yeah, it really uh, is a veteran approach, correct? He has just concentrated on keeping Fokker controlled where he wants him. A bit of a question, I guess, on the aggressiveness of Sully here, but if he's doing the job. Yeah, yeah. and uh, only he can feel how good Wesley is at, and how dangerous he is. And the danger isn't when you're, you know, a top half guard controlling the inside of the far leg. The danger isn't Wesley's going to submit you or, or do something. The danger is Wesley might be able to stand up. And that's what Sully's having to work so hard to prevent. But now he's, he's got his back hip back, back stepping out to, he can maybe knee the body here and move to the scarf position. And Wesley's coming up on top. And this, these three minutes is a very, very, very big three minutes now. Wesley can, if Suli exhales and suddenly finds he has very little energy left, uh, Wesley can, can fight to win this fight. Nice work by Sully getting up there. So what does Fokker need to do in this situation? Well, Apart from yeah, that. yeah. So Sully ripped the hips out of him there. Fokker still got time. If he believes, and he does, that he is the fresher of the two, he has the time to get up. And if he can get up two times, then get up three times, then get up four times, if there's enough time left, he can finish an exhausted man who is who's otherwise, Sully is otherwise winning the fight. That dynamic of fatigue versus work is so vital in this fight. Everyone, we are over halfway in the third and final round of this welterweight bout. Suli is in the orange and gray shorts on top. Bucker is in the bottom position in the pure orange. And so far, it's really been Suli's fight. Yeah, it really has. The, uh, you know, people at home, when we watch fights like this, it is so difficult. We, we can spend our lives finding the words to explain how excruciatingly painful and hard work, the burning in the muscles, the, te the tearing in the mind as, as you fight your way through these. These are hard, hard, hard fights to fight. And you'll see it, whoever wins, if, if this goes the distance, and I'll go in to speak to the winner, but you guys will see it and you can talk about it. You'll see the body language of these two when they get up, particularly Suli. He is, fight, he is redlining himself now with 90 seconds to go. And, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is, is a wonderful, wonderful martial art. And it's a unique martial art in that it allows you to slowly wring the life out of somebody. You know, it, to slow... Oh, a minute's a long time here. It is to be on the feet. Uh, a, an interesting stand-up, because I don't know about you, Robin, but it certainly looked like he was working there. Oh, and yeah. beautiful. This is a man who knows exactly how to fight his fight, and he's doing exactly what he wanted to do, and he's fighting a perfect fight for him. And there may be people who watch this who prefer seeing head kicks and, and, and left hooks, but martial arts is about finding the way to protect yourself while defeating an opponent, and Suli has done a masterful job of that tonight. And remember as well, LFL, this is a tournament. This is a, this is a knockout. This, is a, this isn't a... You know, this isn't done on politics. Sully wants that belt, and he has put in a performance today that will make any other welterweight in LFL's tournament stand up and take notice, because if you can't stop this man, he will do this to you all day. Yeah, and, and you create a reputation, and you create expectations. So the next time he fights, somebody is so concerned about these, uh, you know, attacking takedowns that it'll open up his ability to land those big, powerful punches. Right? So you shape, you shape the future through which, the, the lens through which your future opponents will view you. For sure, and that was a dominating performance, and you can guarantee any other welterweight in the LFL field right now. I think this is the only welterweight bat we have on the card, but you can be sure that other fighters are watching this very closely, and they're gonna have an interesting problem to unravel with Sully. Abdesalam Mohammed. Andy, what do you think of that? How do you view that performance? Well, technically, on the scorecard, Sully takes it. Uh, I think he came in here with a game plan, and that was, uh, you know, we, we saw him explode in the first round. Uh, 
I don't think he was planning to get out of the first round, but if it went the whole distance, it was to get your opponent down, wear him out, and that's exactly what we saw. Yeah, for sure. That was a wily veteran's performance. I guess the question is, how do you stop Sully from just doing that to you with the, you know? It... Oh, we, uh, and I believe we are going now to Tom for the winner's uh, announcement. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of five minutes, we've counted the points and we have a unanimous decision in favor of the man in the blue corner, Tuli Abdesalam. Suli, congratulations, man. How, for people who will never experience what that was like, how physically and mentally exhausting is a fight like that? Alhamdulillah. The first, uh, thank you, Allah, for giving me another chance. That's my, uh, the first fight, and 77 kilo. Long time, no, no, no fight. Uh, Hammer, my arm is broke three weeks before. And then, uh, Alhamdulillah, today I win. But uh, no, no way to me thinks is different. But Alhamdulillah, I win. Well, congratulations, man. You showed the beauty of the art of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. Your winner, Suli Abdel Salam Mohammed. <laughs>